Welcome to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, we do this podcast on Sunday to make sure you get fed. Some people don't get to get out on Sunday and go to church, so we want to make sure there's a message on here to help you. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. I want to talk to you about something tonight that I've been kicking around for quite a while. I, uh, I've got a little pebble or a little rock I got in a in a uh, craft store. Got a whole bag of them, and I read this d- this devotional years ago about Revelation two seventeen, and I just want to read it. I, I want to start it and read it. I've I've carried that little rock off and on for years, and it means a lot to me because when I get finished tonight, you're going to understand why it means what it means. But Revelation two seventeen. It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for the opportunity that you have given me, Lord, I praise you for the message. Lord, I pray that they would touch hearts and lives in a mighty way, wherever this may go, all over this planet. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Like I said, I've carried this for a lot of years, off and on. It laid in a drawer for a long time, and, and I got to th- I read Revelation 2 and 17 and, and went and hunted it up and found it. And I just, I want to talk to you about what these stones mean. You know, Christ said, he that overcometh, he will, he will give them a white stone. What does that white stone represent? And I'm going to give you two, two separate examples of what these white stones represent in two different uh, cultures. In Roman culture, they used them for voting. I'm sorry, in Roman culture, they used them for uh, uh to find out if a man was guilty or innocent, like a jury. They give jur- the jurors a white stone and a black stone, and they, they cast the white stone for innocence. And, and if, if you got a lot of white stones, if you got more white stones than black stones, you were declared innocent. And if you got more black than white, you were declared guilty. And I used to be, be a, a member of an organization that that's exactly how we, we uh, voted on things. They gave us two stones. I had no idea what it, what it was from. I'd read that verse, but had not, had not a clue on, on where the origins of that was. But what I want to declare to you tonight, if Christ, Christ is going to give you a white stone, he's for you. He has declared you innocent. I was at the jail today, and you know, I go there two or three times a week, and I was at the jail today, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, before you're ever going to overcome what got you in here, what, what, what your reputation has become by being in here, before you're ever going to not, to, to to know that and understand that you can overcome that is to know where you stand with God. Know who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And I always ask them, you know, is there anybody here that Jesus is not the Lord of their life? And if they are, we, we address that. But, but when they, you know, when they tell me, no, Jesus is Lord, I want to, I want to educate them on, on what this is all about, what a Christian life is all about, and what this, what this white stone represents can do in their life. You know, in Roman culture, you were declared innocent with this white stone. And, and, and what, uh, what this, this commentary was reading, I, I read it in two different things. I've got seven different examples of what a, a white stone represents in, in all kinds of different cultures, and I want to read that, but the Roman one was that you were innocent. Now, now keep that in mind as I'm, I'm reading these others, but we're going we're to go into one more at the end. It says, 
The first one says a white stone could have been used to communicate affirmation for encouragement, to encourage somebody. It says the, the white stone was used to make a statement of acquittal. You understand that? Be found innocent. It says the white stone was given to a slave who obtained freedom. Now, I can relate to that one myself. I have re- re- uh, uh, obtained freedom through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I'll never live under shame and condemnation ever again. I, I tell them at the jail a lot. I said, listen, I said, I make it a point not to come in here asking you what you've done, what you've done to get in here. There's been some just come up and blurted out to me, but most of the time I say, man, listen, I don't want to know what you're in here for. I want to I want to tell you who you can be in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, or if you're born again, who you are in Him. But it, it, it says a white stone was given as a badge of authority. A, 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 a badge of authority means that you have the authority to represent what that, you know, like a policeman has a badge for the city that he lives in. Well, he has the full authority of the city or the county that he's working for, the state, the federal government that he's working for. He has the full authority of that government behind him. And Jesus said he would give us a white stone. He would, he would acquit us. He has acquitted us, quitted us. He has forgiven us. We have been found innocent. So it says a white stone was given as an invitation to a banquet. One day after a while, somewhere, we're going to sit down at a banquet with our Lord and Savior. We're going to sit down and feast and celebrate what He has done. Oh, it thrills me to understand and know that. The last one in this in this uh, list, it says, the white stone was given to commemorate an eternal friendship. Now, you, everybody that's listened to this podcast, you can relate to more than one of these. If you're born again, you can relate to Jesus calling you innocent, declaring you innocent. And it thrills me to know that that People don't have to live in the shame and the condemnation of religion and what this world wants to, to, to wind up and throw on them. And when we come to realize and understand what Jesus has made us to be, who he has made us to be, and how we can operate in that, in that freedom. You know, you may, you may have lived a life that's not very... Not very, uh, how, what can I say? Not very advertisable. You, you really don't want to talk about what's going, what went on in your past. You know what? Jesus has forgot about your past. If, if God has forgiven you, he chooses not to remember your unrighteousness. And if you'll come to that conclusion and understand that when that comes up, when that subject comes up, you can remember this white stone. I carry this thing. I carry this thing to the jail. And, you know, you stick your hand in your pocket, and there it is. And it, it's a reminder of who I am in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and what he has declared me to be, and that's innocent. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. I'm not perfect. But First John 1 and 9 said, if you confess your sins... He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And when the devil comes and says, oh, no, don't you remember what you done last week, yesterday, 10 years from now, or 10 years ago, 30 years ago, when the devil comes and tries to accuse you of something, you can point him to what Jesus says, that you're innocent. You're a child of the king, a child of the king through his blood, through his sacrifice. And and, and when I think about what he has done to give us that that opportunity, to give us that that much-needed assurance, I can't help but go to uh, 
from to Isaiah the 52nd chapter and the 12th verse I read this all the time I, I, I reference it all the time he was talking to the children of Israel it says Isaiah 52 and 12 it says for ye shall not go out with haste nor by flight for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard you don't have to walk through life Wondering the direction that you're going to go. Wondering if you're qualified. Because Jesus has qualified you. Not only has he qualified you, but the Lord will make a way. I like to say it like this. The Lord will will make a way for you, and then God will watch your back while you're walking in it. A lot of millions of people don't understand that. Millions of people don't understand that they can take this book and read it for what it says and believe it for what it says. And, uh, millions say, well, you know, I'm, I, I, just, I have really messed up in my life. Join the club. Everybody has. We've all done it. But I don't get here. I get out here and advertise what I do. Nor do I want anybody else advertising what I've done. I've been forgiven. God said he chose, he chose to listen to this now, to remember it no more. And I tell him at the jail, who am I? Now, I started this a while ago. I'm going to finish it. I said, listen, I said, I make it a purpose not to ask you what you've done. I don't want to know. I really don't. I'm not concerned about what you've done. I said, but I want you to understand this. I want you to realize that, that if God has forgiven you, who am I to bring it up? If God has forgot about it, I'm sure not going to be the one bringing it up. And when, when the devil wants to bring up your past, bring up that thought of the mistake that you made or, or maybe was forced to make, now listen to me. There, there's been a lot of times that I've been forced to do something that I didn't want to do, did not want to do it. But my, I was, my, had my hand twisted. My, had my hand forced to make a decision. To make a decision that would forever change my life. And I've not always made those decisions the right way. I've not always made the right decisions. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> God's for you. God is for you. You've been acquitted by Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he, who is he? God made made him. Who is him? Jesus. God made Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, to be sin for you. This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 23. It says, He made him to be sin for you so that you might be the righteousness of God in him. Jesus didn't know any sin. He never never committed sin. But yet God made him sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, a lot of people, they look at you kind of sideways. And a lot of them, you know, know, just get kind of, out of the way with you, lose their religious mind, I I like to say a lot of times, over statements like that. But I'm not not saying that. God's saying that. His word in 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that. And I'm not going to argue the point. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Why? Because Jesus came and died on the cross for my sins and, and, and was raised on the third day to justify me in the eyes of a mighty God. I meant to bring this T-shirt down here that I bought. I bought this T-shirt in, the, in the, one of the darkest times in my life. And I bought it in Key West, Florida. I don't wear it very much anymore. If I want, if I want to, to get somebody's attention to talk to them, I will wear it just to get their attention because it's an attention getter. And I, I don't know if I've ever talked about it. I've talked about it on the podcast a lot. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on here or not. But it says a good lawyer knows the law 
and a great lawyer knows the judge. Now, that goes over really big in the jail. I get their attention when I say that because they all nod in their head, yeah, we understand that one. But do you get it? A good lawyer knows the law. Anybody can study a book, but a great lawyer knows the judge. And in, in this carnal world, that means a lot. But in, in the spiritual world that I'm talking about today, that's life and death. Because when people look at, at what's, what's being said and, and they say, you know, they, they kind of look at that T-shirt and kind of snigger and laugh and say, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I said, well, what about your attorney? Do you have a good lawyer or a great lawyer? Mine's a great one. Not only is mine a great lawyer, but he's my brother. You know, the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. And if, and if Jesus is my brother... My attorney, my defense attorney, is my brother. Guess what? The judge is my father. And and when when you can see it in their eyes in the jail, that it kind of opens them up. Because when you when you start understanding where you stand in the whole scheme of things, the whole plan of God, where you stand in that plan. When you can come to understand that in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're as close to God as a breath. He's right here. Right here. I've heard a, pre- I heard a preacher talking about it one time. He said, they, you know, people, you cry and they, and they wail and they go on about, I don't think God's hearing my prayers. I don't think my prayers is getting any higher than the ceiling. And, and, and I heard him say it. He said, they don't have to get any higher than you. Right here. He's right here. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You don't have to scream and wail. No. All you've got to do is believe that He heard you and stand on what His Word says about that prayer request. I encourage people to send me their prayer request because when they send me their prayer request, you know what I do? I send them the Word the Word, God's Word, about that prayer request. Because I'm going to say something that's really controversial, and I didn't say this. I'm going to quote Keith Moore. He said it. He, He said there's two things that God can't do, and I'm going to add one to it. There's really three. He said God cannot do something that He's already done. And he cannot do something that he's told us to do. And I'm going to say this, he can't lie. So if he's told us to do that, he'd be lying if he done, went back and done it for us. You know what I'm talking about, Matthew eleven twenty three 23. said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. What's the mountain? The mountain is your problem. The mountain is that lying devil that wants to whisper in your ear saying, hey, you you just done too much. You've made a mistake that that you're you're never going to get away from. Remember that. Remember that white stone, that that stone of acquittal, of innocence. Now, when you when you when it when he comes at you and he lies like that, I I, I tell him all the time. Listen, the only way that that lie is ever going to affect you is if you believe it. If you believe it. I'm here to tell you right now that that Revelation 2 and 17 was written for us to stand on now. Because if you've been born again, He's washed you clean. Have you messed up today? Probably. We all do. Confess it. Don't think you got to go back down at the bottom of the ladder and start all over with. No, confess it. Understand and know without a shadow of a doubt that God is for you. He's for you, not against you. And He wants to stand with you and, and, and hold you up a lot of times because I know we all need it. Now, I want to go into uh, this last part of uh, what I was talking about in this uh, 
this devotional I was reading, and I've already told you part of it. We, uh, you, you're, you're counted as innocent in the Roman court, but in Greek society, they voted with these things. And like I said, I was part of an organization that voted that way. You give away, you give, they give us two, two stones, a white and a black one. And we voted yes or no. We're for it or against it. And that's the way, that's the way Greek uh, societies voted on it. That's the way Greek societies went about doing things, is if they wanted something done, they put it to a vote, and they voted yes. They were for that issue with a white stone. Now, if Jesus has given us this white stone, he's declared us innocent, and he has declared that he is for us. Completely, 100%. He's for you today. I don't know what you're going through. I have not a clue about what you are dealing with. We all deal with things. Every one of us deal with things. But I want to assure you one thing, that the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard The King James Version says the rear reward, but it means the rear guard. He'll watch your back. I've walked that way for a lot of years now. I I wished I could have walked that way as a young man, but I didn't realize, I wasn't taught that I could believe this book above all opinion, that I could believe this book like I believe that the sun's going to come up in the east over here in the morning, and set in the West. It does it every day. I have no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. But listen to me today. Understand this. I want you to know and realize something. That God has declared you. If you are born again, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, He has declared you innocent. I never understood for a lot of years, the biggest part of my adult life, how that Hebrews 4.16 says, come boldly to the throne of grace. I didn't understand that. To me, before I started figuring out uh, about what God's Word really said about Him, to me, God was some unpleasable tyrant that couldn't be pleased no matter what you done. No matter how hard you tried, you you couldn't please Him. But when I come to understand that he was that loving father in Luke 15, that all he wanted me to do was turn to him and come home. When I come to know that and understand that, it, it, it changed me. And I, this, that's the reason I want to preach all that I can preach because I've got a message that everybody needs to hear. And that is God loves you. I don't care where you've at or where you're at, what you've done, how many mistakes you've made in doing it. I don't care how old you are and how many years you lived in those mistakes. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants more than anything to see you born into his family. But we've got to believe what God says. We've got to believe what his word says. We've got to understand that that white stone in in Revelation 2 and 17 meant that he had forgiven us and he was for us. He had cast his vote. I want to read something from that, that devotional, the last part of it. It says, Thus when Christ promised a stone, a white one, to the believers who overcame, he was not only announcing freedom, forgiveness, and acquittal from the, from the past sinful life, but he, he was also telling them, my vote is for you. I am, putting, I am putting my full support behind you. <laughs> How powerful is this when we realize what the white stone means in Revelation 2.17? It says it declares that Christ has found us not guilty and that he is putting his full support behind you 
and me. Jesus Christ has cast his vote. He's voting for us. He's rooting for us. And you know what he's rooting more than anything else for you to do? And that is to believe what he says, to stand on what he says, to walk in what he says, and forget about what the devil wants to throw up in your face, what, it, what the devil wants to just, just continually bring up. No, tell him. said, I have been found innocent. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has cast his vote. He has counted me innocent, and he is for me. Don't live in that shame and condemnation. Don't live in the, in the, the lies that Satan has went out of his way to just to push you and push you. See, I, I tell him at the jail all the time, I said, listen, Satan wants to keep you in a place that you're so downtrodden and shame, shamed and condemned over your past that you never realize who you are in Jesus Christ and you can never be used to further the kingdom of God. You understand what I'm saying? He wants us to realize and know, God wants us to realize and know who we are in Jesus Christ, who we are in the finished work of Jesus Christ, Jesus dying on the cross, innocent of all charges, and being raised from the dead on the third day, and us confessing him as our Lord and Savior. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you've never been born again, do you want to be born again tonight? Is today the day that you surrender your heart and life to Jesus Christ? Romans 10 and 9 said, If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in, the, in your heart that, you, that God has raised him from the dead, it says, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's millions out here that believe in God, believe Jesus done what he done, and God raised him from the dead to justify them. But they've never made him Lord of their life. They've never invited him into their heart and said, Lord, be my Lord, and confessed him as Lord of their their life. Do you want to do that today? I pray today that you do that. And then go get find you one of these white stones so you can remember what Jesus has declared, that you're innocent of all charges, that he has cast his vote for you, He's for you, not against you. He'll make a way for you, and then he'll watch your back while you walk in it. All you have to do is have faith in him. Now, that's years ago, I would have, I would have had a fit to think that that's all I had to stand on. That, you know, that, I, that I'd, I had really messed up and, and that's all I had to stand on was faith in God. But today, that's all I'm going to stand on. Faith in Him. Faith in what His Word says. Come hell or high water, I'm going to stand on what God's Word says. I'm not going to wring my hands. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to worry about it. They hollering tornadoes tonight. Big deal. No weapon formed against me will prosper. That's just the way I look at it. I'm going to read you one more scripture. Then I'm going to turn you loose. And it comes out of Romans, the 8th chapter. And the 12th verse. I'm sorry. Romans 8, 17. No. Hold on. Let me look. It's Romans 8, 31. It says, For what shall we say then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He's declared you innocent. He has declared his allegiance to you. He has cast a vote for you. He's for you. If you've never been born, born again, he's for you. First and foremost, he's for you being born again. And then getting in his word and starting to believe what he says. Forget about what religion says. Forget about what the world says and stand on what God says.
I really appreciate you tuning in, and I pray today that you allow God's Word to permeate your heart and, and show you just how much He loves you, just how much He cares for you, and just how much He wants to be real in your life and watch you walk in faith in Him. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. You got a prayer request? Let me hear it. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's got an answer for your prayer. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you. I praise God for faithful partners that sow into this ministry faithfully, week after week, making sure that we do what we're supposed to do, and that is to give God's Word away free of charge all over this planet. And it's partners like you that are helping us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into His kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.